Well, welcome back to the sports show. Time to turn our attention to the footy in the SANFL. Of course, the grand final on the weekend coming up. But this man, coach of the Norwood Footy Club, Jared Cotton, joins us. Cotts, how are you? Good, thanks, guys. Thank you've been shouting a lot too, mate. Well, I have. I've lost my voice. Lost so if it sounds a bit weird, I apologise. So. so, mate, do we, we get into the grand final last year, the Norwood Footy Club. Mm. Uh, so you see that as a fairly successful year. Mm. Then once you lift the bar of expectation, everyone just thinks that's going to follow. We know that's not the case. North, of course, won the grand final and finished down the bottom. You guys made it through the elimination and then got knocked out by the crazy. How do you judge your season? Yeah, I think we had a good year. Um, probably not a great, a great year. Um, we were probably up and down a little bit, inconsistent at times. Played some elite football and then played some ordinary football as well. So trying to make sure we're consistent is probably the key for us next season because we're, we're, our best is good enough. Um, but at times we played some ordinary footy as well. Had a look at your finals. I, I saw both the, the, the games. Yep. And I, I reckon it was only 15 minutes that cost you. Yep. Really, really, in that game, the yep. one you lost, yep. 15 minutes of football, which, which can be... Pretty critical. No, it? without yeah, doubt. Yeah, final. yeah, without doubt. And coming from the elimination final, um, we played some really good footy in that mm. game, but it was a really hard fought game. Um, and then trying to back that up every week is obviously a hard thing to do, but yeah. um, Adelaide's first 10 to 15 minutes was elite. Like, it was unbelievable. Couldn't miss. Uh, everything went really well for them, which was a credit to them. Um, and went them, went them and chasing the, chasing the game, which was really hard for us to do. So, um, yeah, we just didn't play our best footy on that day, but that can happen in finals as well. Yeah. Mate, you spent some time coaching with the Crows before you came back and took the head role at, at Norwood. So you, mm. you've got a, a take on both sides. There's been a lot of talk about the Crows and Port Adelaide with the top-up players and then with the AFL players. And yep. you've had to go through that now coaching against them. I mean, what's your feel on, on where it's... Um, there's lots of different scenarios that make it harder. Um, but overall, I think it's good for the competition for it to be in. Um, obviously, being at Adelaide when it first started... Um, with Adelaide coming into the competition, I know how hard they work on making um, that team elite. And it makes um, those junior players coming through for Adelaide to be able to get to know their game style, um, they play the way they want to play as a football club. So from that point of view, it's really good for the AFL clubs and it's great for our competition to have a high standard of football. Um, but at times with different scenarios, obviously our, our players, are, they work. Yep. Um, so when you're playing an AFL team on a Friday night, um, it becomes a really hard scenario from that point of view. Um, so yeah, overall I think it's, it's good for the competition. They just need to keep looking at things to make sure that it doesn't go too lopsided in one in one area. Which is a, a point, but when you played Port Adelaide at Alberton, yep. th there were a number of players that were coming back from Port Adelaide mm. uh, who are regular start uh, AFL players. Yeah. Uh, Ebert, I think. Uh, Ebert, uh, Ollie Wines. Ollie, uh, yeah, Dixon. Dixon. Yeah. I mean, so that makes that's a great up. challenge. But mm. when we played them on that day, we probably had four or five of our elite players out. Yeah. So that made it an even bigger challenge for us. Um, so how they manage that, I haven't got the answer to that, to be honest. But um, there needs to be some consideration for those scenarios um, because it is hard to come up against players that are Probably one of their players is on more money than our whole salary cap. So, <laughs> um, so and that's just yeah. being realistic. That's yeah. just the way it yeah. is. But um, you know how how they manage that and how the SNFL deals with that. I think it needs to be a continued conversation on how to make that work. Can we can we can we ask another one, Phil? Mm. Um, about we we talked off air about the coaches. Yep. In the box mm. uh, in the finals. <laughs> yeah. You're sitting there with your uh, couple of blokes who probably work at uh, Coles on the weekend. <laughs> Volunteers, so, or, or, pretty know, much. Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. To use yeah. A point. Yep. Where in the box next to you, there'll be 10 blokes, there'll be 10, maybe more. Yeah, uh, especially when the AFL team has been knocked out of finals. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, they all, and they, and they can. Um, but I, I think Adelaide probably would have had, you know, Don Pike, Scott Camperali, yeah. um, Matty Clark, Ben Hart in the coach's box, yeah. which obviously is another advantage. variable to it. Yeah. Um, but for us, it was me and my assistant coaches that, you know, are probably on, you know, $5,000 for the year. So. Yeah. You know, there is that part of it. So it's not just the on-field scenario, there's the off-field the off -field scenario as well. Um, again, there are ongoing discussions, I think, that need to be um, in play on, yeah. on trying to make it as, as even as possible for, for yeah. every team. Not just Norwood, I'm talking about West, South, sure. all, all the other yeah. SNFL clubs. Um, you know, Glenelg have been the best team, I think, so far this year, yeah. um, including the AFL teams. They've had a fantastic year. So... Um, hopefully for them, I, I think it'd be great for them to win the, the premiership. They haven't won one since '86. I think it'd be great for the comp. 
How'd you go against the Bays during the uh, We beat them in round one, um, only just, um, and then they probably did us over in the second half at, at, at the Bay. Mm. I just think they've been the most consistent team yeah. for the year. Well, they finished um, up, didn't they? Yeah, they, they did, yeah. Up, so, yeah. Uh, and I think they've played the best footy for the year as well. Okay. Mate, reserves yeah. footy is a big part of the club. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously, the, the problem that you face, other than having to deal with the AFL teams at the end of the season, all the scouts come in and grab your talent, yep. and so you've got to rebuild off of that, which is what happened to North, happened to you uh, at North the year before. Yep. Red League's in the final yes. this year, so the yeah. club's solid, really, from in the finals with the seniors and the yep. reserves into the grand final. Yeah, without doubt. A lot, like last year, obviously, we had both teams in the grand final. Uh, this year, obviously, we finished fourth seniors, but the reserves again into the grand final. And really, on this year's been more of a younger group, which has been great for the club. Yeah. Um, we've got some really good youth coming through, but again, yeah, trying to make sure that we hold that group together because everyone's looking for opportunities to play league footy and we've got a group of players that definitely um, can play a lot of league football. They just need an opportunity, which a few got towards the back end of the year. Yeah. Um, but trying to manage that um, is, is quite hard, especially with country footy and, and players can go out there and make a bit of money doing that as well. So you really want to have, you want to, have to really want to play league footy to, to play SNFL because, again, going back to the AFL scenario, you have to train at the level to compete with AFL teams. So you can't train once a week or twice a week. You need to really have a program that can compete. So trying to hold those younger players um, can be a challenge at times. Always been a strength, the Norwood juniors and coming yep. through and, and yep. the reserves or whatever. Yep. Not so much the reserves, but when I go back to 17s and 19s, Norwood were always there. Yep. Always got a great recruiting zone or yep. whatever. But always been powerful in that area. Uh, you yeah. still see that? Yeah, without doubt. For, for a local West NFL club, you need your juniors to be... Um, developing really well and, and trying to get them to play finals at any level yeah. so they're prepared to play league football. But our real focus was us um, when I took over was our first year in the reserves uh, finished bottom, the 18s finished bottom. Yeah. So my second year, um, 18s played in the prelim, reserves played in the grand final and we played in the grand final. Yeah. So yeah. we're heading the right track in regards to the club being um, successful, not just for one year, we're trying to make it sustained over a period of time. Yeah. Um, and I think again this year, you know, the seniors had a good year. The reserves are hopefully can win the premiership. Our 18s were around the mark. So I think from a club point of view, I think we finished second in the Stanley Lewis again this year, which yeah. is the, 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 the overall, overall trophy. Yeah. Yeah. And we won that last year. So we're in pretty good shape. But uh, obviously from a senior point of view, we don't want to be fourth and fifth. We want to make sure we're competing to win the premiership. Yeah. Mate, the worst part about being a senior coach when you don't make the finals, all the rework comes in. Reinvigorate, rebuild, rejuvenate, <laughs> reconstruct, whatever yeah, the yeah, rework yeah. may, may yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. There has to be your exit meetings, and some players are going to retire. Some yep. have to be told they're not going on, which is yep. clearly the, the worst part of coaching, without yep. doubt. I mean, yep. other than during the year when you tell a player he hasn't made the team. Yep. Have you had to have some of those difficult Yeah, we started our exit meetings this week. So, um, yeah, like you said, there's the normal um, scenario where some will leave by their own choice. Some is we have to rejuvenate the list um, and, again, give these reserves players an opportunity to play league footy. We had Campbell and Josh Richards and Brody Carroll get opportunity this year and they all played some good footy. So we have to be eye on being successful at senior level but also make sure that we don't um, just put those reserves men to the back burner. They need to get an opportunity as well. So it's just list management and balancing your list out. Um, and I think we're doing it reasonably well at the minute. But again, that's a real challenge to make sure that we you keep your best team, but you still give um, kids an opportunity to play league footy yeah. as well. So, is there is there is there uh, an A grader here we're talking about that is looking like maybe this is it? Oh, look, is Brady Dore retired. Dorr? Um, yeah. Obviously, there's discussions with um, Alex Giorgio, Jace Bo, Ed Smart. They're they're all Good around. Players. Yeah, uh, Good players. Pre double premiership players, exactly. triple premiership yeah. players. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, in in the end, we'll have discussions and work out what's best for the footy club. Um, yeah. Brady already retired, um, yeah. but there's uh, those those boys are sort of thinking about what's what's best for them moving forward, one individually um, and and also as a club. Yeah. So that, that that'll work itself out over the next few weeks. Mm. Uh, Brady's announced his retirement. You know, sometimes <clears throat> with players, they have a massive impact when they go. Other players tend to transition out, even though they were good players. But there's players underneath. He yeah. was a pretty unique club man as well. I mean, the players loved him. Yeah. Everyone at the club loved him. It's hard to replace hard that, that, that yeah. kind of player. Yeah. Oh, one, yeah. one, for who they are as a person, and two, obviously their experience. Um, Three-time premiership player, yeah. 200 games, they don't fall off trees. So, um, yeah, they are hard to replace. But he, he was such a good character around the club yes. and great at team, team man, team first, um, orientated person. Oh, I could ask him to do anything. He'd just mm. go and do it. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that that's one of 
those players that's going to be hard to replace. But again, looking at that, it's opportunity. It's opportunity for a Luke Sermon. It's, it's opportunity for a Daniel Johnson, a Campbell. So we need those players to come through. So um, as, as sad as it is, I think every club comes to a point where that you have to transition. Yep. Um, and, and it's a great opportunity and, and exciting for the younger players to be part of the senior group. And we can't let him go, can we, without a going through the... I'm not sure where you're going. <laughs> well, oh, the yeah, grand final. Yeah, oh, yeah. Of course, yeah. let's talk about... Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 it is a big weekend. It is. Oh, oh, look, I think over the course of the year... Um, be careful here. No, I know you're right next to me. I understand that. Sorry, mate. He's a wuss. You were then trying. Glenelga being the best team for the season. Yeah. And we were like that last year in North LA, to their credit, beat us on the day. But I think Glenelg should win the game, um, but Port Adelaide got such a talented list that they're very capable of winning as well, which we saw in the second semi. So, um, But I still think Glenelg on the day will, um, I think they'll win. Think it'll be supported? You think? Uh, I think Glenelg will come out of the woodwork, obviously. Yeah. Um, and Port Adelaide has still got those Magpie supporters that hopefully come out and support their team. So if they can get around the 30,000 mark, I think that'll be a great result. Okay. I mean, I think we had 40 odd. Soon, yeah, I was so, going to say, there was yeah. 40 there last year. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, yeah I, I think that there'll be I don't think most of the SNFL clubs out there will be uh, supporting Probably. Port Adelaide, but no, no. Uh, I still think it'll be a good crowd. I, I hope so. Mm. Yeah, so do mm. I. All right, mm. Jared Cotton, our special guest. The SNFL Grand Final this weekend: Glenelg versus Port Adelaide. Uh, Baz is holding back on who he thinks will win. Uh, stay with us. Still a bit more to come on the show. <laughs> yeah. 